The Phantom Investigations The Moving Coffins of Barbados We got involved with the moving coffin mystery when the BBC commissioned us to make a documentary about it. We explored Christchurch Cemetery in the fishing village of Oystins in Barbados. The Chase Elliott tomb there, at the centre of the mystery, was built by James Elliott in 1724. Made from coral stone blocks, it's partly above and partly below ground. It was once sealed with a blue Devonshire marble slab that needed four men to lift. Below this slab, fifteen steps lead down to the vault floor, which is four by two metres. Because of the Barbados climate, the coffins of the wealthy were massive lead-cased structures, like Egyptian sarcophagi. Eight men were needed to move one, and this ponderous weight makes their movement more mysterious. Mrs. Thomasina Goddard was buried there in July of 1807. In 1808, the body of two-year-old Mary Anna Chase was laid in the vault beside her. Mary's elder sister, Dorcas, was brought there on July the 6th, 1812. Their father, the Honourable Thomas Chase, was reportedly the most hated man on the island. It was rumoured that Dorcas had starved herself to death as an escape from his brutal abuse. A month later, Thomas himself died and was brought into the vault. There was consternation when the blue Devonshire marble slab was lifted. The tiny coffin of Mariana Chase had been flung across the vault and now rested upside down in one corner. Mrs. Goddard's coffin lay on its side, with the back leaning up against the wall. The burial party replaced the coffins and laid Thomas to rest among them. In April 1816, there was a slave revolt. Samuel Brewster, a member of the Chase family, was killed by his slaves and given temporary burial close to where it had happened. His infant son, Samuel Brewster Ames, died in September of that year and his tiny corpse was brought to the vault. The coffins were again in disarray. The massive casket of the Honourable Thomas Chase was on its side several feet from where it had been laid. Other coffins were also disturbed. Everything was replaced. In November 1816, Samuel Brewster was brought from his temporary resting place and taken to the vault. The marble slab seemed to be resting undisturbed in its place, but when it was lifted, the burial party saw that the coffins had again been disturbed. The Reverend Thomas Chase, vicar of Christchurch, and three companions examined the vault. They looked for signs of flooding, but failed to find them. They also checked the walls to see if there were signs of forced entry. There were none. When the vault was opened, on July the 17th, 1819, for the body of Mrs. Thomasina Clark, the coffins had moved again, and Lord Combermere, the governor, became involved. On his orders, every stone was carefully tested. Sand was strewn on the floor. The marble slab was cemented into place, and several witnesses pressed their signet rings into the cement. On April the 18th, 1820, Combermere ordered the vault to be checked. The seals were intact. The slab was lifted. Immediately below it, the biggest and heaviest coffin, 
that of Thomas Chase, was three quarters of the way up the stairs. The sand was unmarked. The walls and floor were perfectly sound and dry. Combermere ordered the bodies to be reburied in separate graves in Christ Church Cemetery. And the vault stands open and empty to this day. The mystery remains unsolved.